Dear friends, we have entered into the Lenten season. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the Lent. It is the season of prayer, reflection, penance and fasting, which uh, prepares us for Christ's redemption on Easter Sunday. And through which we believe that we get eternal redemption also. The question arises is why do we why do we apply ashes on our heads? Following the example of the Nineveh in the Old Testament, when they were addressed by Prophet Jonah, they put sackcloth and sat in the ashes for repentance and this reminds us also to be humble to be simple to to understand the mortality of human life on this earth etc when the priest applies ashes on our forehead and saying he says remember man is dust and unto dust you shall return he is a reminder for all of us. And why this 40 days is a question people ask. There are plenty of examples in the Bible which is symbolically taken. 40 is a symbol of sacredness. And it says um, in the Old Testament number of examples I can give one is Genesis chapter 7 verse 12 says God punished mankind by sending a flood over the earth that lasted for 40 days and 40 nights. In book of Jonah, the prophet Jonah, chapter 3, verses 4 says, the people of Nineveh repented for 40 days with fasting when Jonah preached the destruction of Nineveh. Book of Numbers, chapter 14, verses 34 says, Moses and the Hebrew people wandered in the desert for 40 years. In Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 4 and uh, verse 6 it says the prophet Ezekiel had to lie on his right side for 40 days as a figure of the siege that was bring Jerusalem to destruction. In the first Kings chapter 19 verse 8 says the prophet Elijah fasted and prayed for on the Mount Horeb for 40 days. Moses also, we see in Mount Sinai, prayed for 40 days. So 40 is very, very important. And that 40 days is taken into the New Testament. When we see in the New Testament, it says Jesus fasted and prayed in the desert for 40 days. And that's how the temptation scene comes in. Therefore, the Catechism of the Catholic Church Number 540 says, By the solemn 40 days of Lent, the church unites herself each year to the mystery of Jesus in the desert. So 40 days is so important for us. Now why do we use ashes? As I told you already, the Nineveh. And there are a number of examples in the Old Testament. For example, we know that Job repented. Ninevites, I already told you. And we saw in the Old Testament, in the, during the Babylon captivity, Daniel wrote, I turned to the Lord God, pleading in earnest prayer with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. You see the Daniel chapter 9 verses 3 this. Jesus made the reference to ashes. We see in Matthew 11, 21 says, If the miracle works in you, had taken place in Tyre or Sidon, they would have reformed in sackcloth and ashes long ago. So uh, sackcloth and ashes, sitting in the ashes and using ash is a sign for human repentance and reconciliation. The church's tradition also we see from 6th century to 10th century, this became a common practice. And during this Lenten season, we dedicate much more time in prayer and fasting and almsgiving. 
we also recommend highly to have a sacramental reconciliation etc during this lenten season now uh, as i said many many good practices we do like way of the cross accompanying jesus to calvary remembering recalling and praying we do retreat recollections acts of mercy bible reading adoration of the blessed sacrament holy week procession etc etc and we see this uh, season uh, of lent as a preparation for easter we must remember the significance of ashes we received in fact it makes us to 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 understand our nothingness we mourn and do penance for our sins we again convert our hearts to the lord who suffered died and rose for our salvation we renew the promises made in our baptism etc so there are many practices we do during this period of uh, in the lent poor francis gives us something very very internal and inward looking practice is very very important and we must uh, when we talks about fasting and abstinence we must abstain many things that uh, we do uh, daily therefore pope francis tells us 10 points number 1 he says fast from hurting words and and say only kind words i think it is very very important we in our daily life in our offices in our meeting places in our uh, the, the whole atmosphere we see hurting words no political leaders speak calumny against one another accusing each other speaking so bad and the world all over we see lot of revenge in the in our movies in our in our um, newspapers violence uh, so the hurting words is uh, it's a very very common among people i think pope francis is rightly asking us abstain from hurting words these days and use only kind words appreciate encourage other people use of words that's why bible says your word has power it is like a is a double edged sword it can kill or it can build so it is better to build by uh, using kind words and compassionate hearts therefore first point he says fast from hurting words and say kind words two he says fast from sadness to be filled with the gratitude you know we see people who are sad vyakul people who are uh, completely gloomy grief stricken we call sadness deep within and this sadness is not going to help us it is better to have a gratitude gratitude even in the midst of difficulties god is active he is giving us uh, a lot of positive elements if we shed our sadness we will experience the gratitude and therefore the second point is fast from sadness and filled with the gratitude third point he says is fast from anger and filled with the patience as i said in the whole world every day in the news channels in our publications newspaper magazines internet everywhere the world in the public public sphere in political sector everywhere we see anger you see the violence that is happening the rape that is happening the hatred is meted out against one another considering the other as an enemy etc instead of anger we must cultivate the habit of patience and therefore pope francis tells us abstain from anger abstain from angry words abstain from revenge and be patient number 4 he says fast from pessimism and be filled with hope pessimism is not going to take us anywhere pessimism is hopelessness pessimism means nothing is going to happen and when we look around us today 
we see a certain amount of pessimism is creeping in the minds of young people. Pessimism is all around. We must abstain from pessimistic thinking to a hopeful thinking. We must have hope. A hopelessness is very, very dangerous. Hope must be cultivated. Positive thinking must be the hallmark of every individual. And a Christian is, must be hopeful because we have a living God. The fifth point Pope Francis is asking us to fast in this Lenten season is from worries and trust in God. Fast from worries and trust in God. So we, we know again it is interrelated, not this pessimism. And so, so much of worry, especially this pandemic period. People are more uh, worried there is anxiety, there is depression among people. We need to come out of this trusting the Lord because in the long run, God has his ways. That trust must be created. Sixth point Pope Francis says is, fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Always people, people complain. Dissatisfaction, you know, psychology says, Basically dissatisfied with oneself, we will make others also dissatisfied. So therefore, complaints must be replaced with contemplative simplicity. It's very, very important for us to practice during this Lenten season. Another point, that is the seventh point, he says, fast from pressures and be prayerful. Be prayerful. Pressure is there. Lives every day, you know, so much of pressure, our workload, our, our anxiety, our worries of, about things, pandemic for example, so much of pressure is put on economy, everybody, the worldly value for money, for prestige, for names, people are craving for. We need to, uh, to keep away these pressures and be prayerful. Keep silence. And then come to the next point. The eighth point he says is fast from bitterness and fill your heart with joy. Bitterness is so, so much seen everywhere. People are so bitter against one another. You see in our society, in the world around, uh, you see one religion is pitted against the another religion. One culture is against another culture. Rich and poor, gender discrimination, caste discrimination, racial discrimination. So much of bitterness in human beings. We consider the other as an enemy. Please abstain from this and bring the heart with joy. Because we are human beings. Everybody has the, the, the personhood and individuality must be accepted. Our fundamental rights, for example, gives us that freedom. Accept each one and everyone is a child of God. So no bitterness. Next point is, he says, fast from selfishness to be compassionate to the other. It is, you know, the world is becoming more selfish. Countries are becoming more selfish. Powerful countries think that it's everything is theirs. Similarly, the rich people think that everything is theirs. Selfishness is a hallmark of uh, uh, the, the devilish uh, attitude. And it is there everywhere. What we need is compassionate people. We need to compassionate to one another. Compassionate to the poor, the weak, the marginalized. We need to be compassionate rather than selfish and self-centeredness. Pope Francis urges us, fast from grudges and be reconciled. Grudges, again, so much of hurt feelings, grudge against the other, enmity against the other, animosity against the other. It is better to reconcile. Like in South Africa, Bishop Desmond Tutu and uh, our Nelson Mandela, the reconciliation uh, commission, no? People went on asking pardon from one another. One day we must reconcile. And this Lenten season is 
is the, the best time for us. And the finally, the last point he says, fast from words, too much of words, you know, uh, people speak too much and listen very little. Let us fast from speaking too much and come to the listening habit. When we listen, we hear. When we hear, we change. And that is why we say listening and silence are two sides of the same coin. Today, the, the you see the media, the, the, the electronic media, or anywhere you see the politicians, etc. Only too much of verbal talk. Too much of talk. Let's listen to people. For example, the farmers are on the strike for so many days now. If we have the attitude of listening, we all, it's not only against any, any particular persons or the authority alone, all of us must listen to the cry of the people. We must listen to the cry of this earth. So Lenten season is a time for us to abstain from the words, too many words, etc. Rhetoric we call. From there to listen to people. The cry of the people. The groaning of the people. And that's what we need to do. I think this Lenten season uh, is, is an opportunity for all of us to change our basic attitude towards life and uh, uh, focusing on God, nearing to God through reconciliation, to accept acceptance of one another and make this, this Lenten season as a time of grace for all of us. I think if we do this, if we practice all these things internally, rather than practicing external practices alone, that will going to help us uh, to make ourselves better. I wish all of you a very fruitful Lenten season. May God bless each of us.